given the wide rate differentials with the U.S. It's not surprising that we're again testing that 150 level. When do you expect a change from uh, BOJ policy and the trajectory for the Japanese currency to go from here? Well, uh, our base case is that Bank of Japan will end uh, its ILCO control in April next year and probably uh, you know, do the first rate hike in December next year. Um, but there is always a, a risk that they, they make the move earlier, uh, potentially due to the weakness of the yen. And I sound like a um, broken record here, but um, uh, we, we still think uh, you know, that the currency is, is too cheap and inconsistent with Japan's uh, fundamentals. Um, uh, and that yield gap is primarily a result of the policy difference. And that, that uh, you know, policy, at least on the Japanese side, is beginning to change. So uh, you know, in the near term, in the near term, markets will continue to test uh, both uh, you know, Japan's bond markets and currency markets. So uh, we don't deny that, given the strength of the US economy and speculation of the US rate trajectory in the next uh, three to five years, um, uh, you know, uh, the, the currency will be challenged uh, in the near term. Uh, but if you, if you look ahead and think about the medium to long term fundamentals, um, uh, we do believe uh, the currency is likelier to appreciate uh, from the current levels uh, as opposed to uh, depreciate. Um, so in terms of the timing, uh, we do think the end of the year and early next year will be a very interesting window uh, to test this mm. thesis. In the meantime, how do you stay invested in Japan? We have some corporate results coming out of banks as well in the Japanese markets. Is there anything that interests you? Well, in the medium to long term, uh, if you assume that the currency will appreciate a little bit, um, uh, you know, the, the appeal of the large cap uh, might be uh, slightly uh, undermined. Um, so, uh, we do look for opportunities to invest into uh, you know, small, media, med, uh, small medium cap, uh, mid-sized uh, companies uh, in, in the medium term. But as long as you have a bit of challenge on the currency front, uh, it's difficult to make that move right away. So our current position still continues to focus on large cap uh, within the uh, Japanese equity space. Uh, but uh, we shouldn't uh, forget about the small mid cap space in the future. And uh, you know, if you have a policy normalization, it could be beneficial to some well-managed Japanese banks as well. And they tend to uh, react quite sensitively to this, this type of move. And in fact, uh, we, we highlight that uh, the sector has actually outperformed uh, the broader Japanese market this year already uh, in, the, in the middle of uh, you know, widening of the YCC um, and uh, you know, the continued chatters about the policy normalization in the future. Uh, Herman, if you're correct in your view on the yen, what, what then would be your outlook for the Nikkei? Because that would uh, perhaps invite some uh, profit taking from foreign, foreign buyers. So uh, that's the likely outcome. Um, uh, now, uh, the timing obviously is quite tricky. Um, so, uh, you know, our, our perspective here is that uh, just in terms of the overall allocation to the Japanese equities, we're basically keeping it at a neutral level. Um, uh, we're not uh, trying to be overexposed uh, compared to our own benchmark uh, uh, to the market uh, because we do believe that the normalization chatter will continue to strengthen in the remaining months of the year. Um, so uh, it, it could be more kind of a range-bound and directionless uh, um, uh, environment uh, for Nikkei. Um, but um, uh, you know, for the medium to long term, um, this uh, small mid cap space uh, will, will continue to look quite interesting. And um, you know, uh, once you make a decision about the timing, it might be an uh, interesting universe to look at.